Welcome to Dramund Kaas, where freedom goes to die and legends are forced on the galaxy. On this channel, we like to highlight how the Sith Empire suffered as a result of infighting and Sith Lords constantly undermining each other. These petty squabbles would split entire armies and pit a master against his apprentice, often giving the Republic and the Jedi a chance to regroup and mount an effective resistance. There was one Sith, however, who saw past petty Sith politics and wanted to bring the dark side directly to the masses. In this video, we tell the story of Darth Jadis, the Sith who wanted to democratize fear. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Very little is known about Darth Jadis other than that he was a human male and was probably born on Dramund Kaas. He was a powerful Sith Lord, second only to Emperor Vitiate, who even referred to him as the best Sith his empire ever produced. For someone with so much power, Jadis was a secretive and cunning individual who, as per the Sith mask mandate, never revealed his face to anyone. He gained recognition among the Sith during the Great Galactic War and later during the Cold War joined the Sith Dark Council. As a member of the Dark Council, Jadis was in charge of the sphere of intelligence and ran the Imperial network of spies and saboteurs with great success, frequently promoting and training other non-force users instead of Sith to be his agents, much to his peers' annoyance. He religiously followed the Sith mask tradition, encasing his entire face and never once revealing his true identity. Despite being a Sith, he never gave in to his rage or passion hiding the emotions that fueled the dark side within him. He was cold and calculating, choosing to focus his brilliance on developing his agents and spy network. He had little interest in the squabbles of fellow Sith, seeing them as obstacles the Empire needed to overcome to reach its full glory. To understand Jadis, we have to understand the Empire he was a part of. After suffering a humiliating defeat in the Great Hyperspace War, the survivors of Naga Sadao's failed campaign against the Galactic Republic were desperate to escape the impending extermination of their species. They started making random hyperspace jumps and scouting missions for new worlds they could call home. It was around this time that a certain Sith Lord named Vishit ordered his historians and researchers to search for the long lost Sith colony world named Dramund Kaas, whose location had been lost during the Great Hyperspace War. The reconstituted Sith Empire, also known as the True Sith Empire, was built by these survivors, who eventually reached and repopulated Dramund Kaas. Dramund Kaas was the third planet in the Dramund system in the Outer Rim's Estran sector. It had two moons and orbited the star Dramund. Vast jungles and oceans originally covered the planet's surface, and it once played host to a colony of the Sith Empire until knowledge of its location was lost during the Great Hyperspace War. Sith Emperor Vitiate rediscovered it in 4980 BBY. The Sith reconstituted into the Sith Empire and made Kaas City on Dramund Kaas their new capital. For the next thousand years, they slowly reshaped the planet's surface, with jungles giving way to cities with towering skyscrapers. The Sith Empire was ruled by the Dark Council, which was composed of 12 members who each held the title of Dark Lord of the Sith. Each Sith Lord wielded considerable power and influence, answering to no one except the Sith Emperor. Membership meant one was considered one of the most powerful Sith Lords of the time, and when a member was killed or assassinated, their apprentice was the first Sith considered to replace them. During the reconstitution of the Sith Empire, the Dark Council was in charge of the day-to-day -day duties of running the Empire. Darth Jadis served on the Dark Council as one of its most powerful members and was in charge of Imperial Intelligence, one of the 12 spheres of influence in the Sith Empire. Jadis hated the bureaucracy and constant squabbling. He plotted against the Dark Council, seeking to take them out, unify the Empire and bring the ways of the Sith to ordinary citizens. For all intents and purposes, he wanted to democratize the Sith teachings and allow normal people to tap into their fear and anger. Jadis was incredibly powerful and knowledgeable in the dark side of the Force. He was a master of the usual Sith powers such as Force Choke, Force Lightning and Force Corruption. Weaker minds stood no chance against his mind tricks and he could also teleport. He possessed the rare ability of Force Healing like Barriss Offee, but he probably only used it on himself. 
He fought with a single bladed red lightsaber and legend has it that simply standing beside him caused others to feel physical pain due to the dark side energy that he radiated. A mysterious yet imposing figure among the Sith Dark Council, Darth Jadis was known for his cold and calculating demeanor as well as his brilliance. While firmly in the dark side, he refrained from showing public signs of rage or passion, unlike some later Sith. I believe FM2187 may have helped in the escape. <laughs> He chose instead to keep his emotions to himself and fuel the dark side of the force and increase his power. He was strangely meritocratic, choosing agents based on their ability and not their Sith heritage, and was strongly opposed to the xenophobic policies of the Empire, openly recruiting aliens into the Imperial Intelligence Network. He held little interest in the politics of the Council, seeing their power struggles as petty squabbles that held back the Empire from reaching its true potential. His behavior would make his fellow council members uneasy, but his followers more devout. He also had a daughter, who later became his only apprentice. The Sith Empire faced its own fair share of rebels and terrorist organizations, and 3,643 years before the Battle of Yavin, Jadis was tasked with uncovering the Eagle's network, a duty he handed off to a new intelligence agent later known as Cypher 9, or Night Shrike. The terrorists staged an attack on Kass City, targeting its main power generators while at the same time bombing the Dominator, a BSX-5 Harrower-class dreadnought that served as Jadis' flagship. Cypher 9 intercepted the terrorists on Kass and thwarted their attack, but news reached the capital that the Dominator had been bombed and thousands of Sith dignitaries and slaves were dead, Jadis presumably among them. Jadis' death led the Dark Council to appoint his daughter, Darth Zorid, to his position. Zorid ordered all intelligence resources and agents to find Eagle, the terrorist organization's leader, and make her pay for her crimes. Cypher 9 was given the assignment and successfully dismantled the entire network, eventually finding and killing the terrorist leader called Eagle. The Eagle had been experimenting with new Imperial weapons called Eradicators, which were part of a satellite-based weapon system. Cypher 9 also discovered that Eagle was working for a mysterious patron high up in the Empire, and their investigation eventually led them to realize that Darth Jadis was the true leader of the Eagle network. Jadis had faked his own death and planned to use the Eradicators to wipe out the Dark Council and use the ensuing chaos to unite the Sith Empire under his rule. Fun fact, Darth Jadis' name is actually an anagram for Judas, which foreshadows his betrayal. Cypher 9 discovered the Dominator intact with a very much alive Darth Jadis hiding out in deep space. Darth Jadis demanded that Cypher 9 give up their half of the Eradicator codes which they had taken when they defeated Eagle. With these, Jadis could activate his weapons of mass destruction. Since Cypher 9 and Jadis only appear in Bioware's Star Wars The Old Republic video game, there are actually four possible outcomes depending on Cypher 9's choice regarding the betrayal of Jadis. Two light side paths lead to Jadis escaping but the Eradicators being stopped. Another path involves playing along with Jadis until he's distracted and captured by the Dark Council, while the fourth involves Cypher 9 joining Jadis and firing the weapons, earning the nickname Hand of Jadis. So that's the story of Darth Jadis, but what do you think? Are there any other Sith Lords you'd like us to cover? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below and as always guys thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.